Breaking news on KGW News at 11. We start tonight with breaking news of two people found dead in a Washington County home. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. The bodies were discovered at the Pine Ridge Mobile Home Park in Aloha. Now homicide investigators are on the scene and so is KGW's Catherine Cook. She's live there. Catherine, what have you learned? Laurel deputies tell us both victims are adults, a man and a woman. Their bodies were discovered in one of these units earlier this evening by a family member. Investigators were called out just after five o'clock this evening. The mobile park where we're at is just off Southeast 195th and Farmington Road. Detectives with Washington County's violent crime unit responded. They say based on what they know now, they don't think there's any danger to the public. At this time, investigators are not releasing the names of the victims or how they died. Neighbors tell us a mother and her adult son had been living in the mobile home where it happened. My hope is that um, they could find out exactly what happened and stuff like that and get it all taken care of. And so that way uh, people can feel safe too, you know. You know, we see some difficult things. This is one of those, um, you know, our, our responsibility and what we really strive to do is keep the community safe. And um, we're gonna keep doing that day in and day out. But yes, yeah, sometimes we see some very hard things. We're told investigators will be out here for quite a while collecting evidence. Anyone with any information on this case is asked to call the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Laurel, back to you. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine Cook live in Aloha for us tonight. And now to a developing story that created quite a scare at a Eugene school today. We're working to learn the name of the man officers shot and killed just feet from the school's front door. KGW's Mike Benner has the latest from Eugene. All is quiet at Cascade Middle School tonight. Students and staff back home after a frightening morning here. Officers shot and killed a man just feet from the front door. And tonight, we still don't know who that man is. Nightfall at Cascade Middle School in Eugene. A lone police cruiser in a pickup truck wrapped in crime tape. The only sign of a deadly shooting just hours earlier. I just thought that I was like lucky to make it to a classroom before like anything actually happened. Students in disbelief over what happened around 1030 Friday morning. Police responded to the school for what's described as a custodial dispute. As officers escorted a man out of the building, were told he flashed a gun. There was a struggle. Police opened fire, killing the man. Well, I heard screaming and uh, like I think two shots or something. And they like shut the cushion down. We all went in like a corner. Thankfully, no students or staff were injured, but parents still raced over to the Northwest Eugene Middle School. Doing okay now that I'm here. As they reunited with their kids, detectives started their investigation. Who exactly was the man officers killed? Why did he bring a gun onto school grounds? These are questions parents want answered. Never in a million years did I think something, you know, like this would happen so close to home. Reporting in Eugene, I'm Mike Benner. Now back to you. And late tonight, the Bethel School District announced classes will resume on Monday and they will have a care room set up for any students who need extra support. Today is the day the government shutdown really hit home. There are more than 800,000 people who did not get paid today. And now entering its 22nd day, it's officially the longest government shutdown in American history. Congress is deadlocked on the wall, but they agreed to one thing today. They passed a bill to ensure federal workers will get back pay once the shutdown is over. But when that will happen is anyone's guess. And for one Portland area businessman, that means delaying the opening of his new distillery and restaurant. John Poteet has worked for the last year to get the new space named Shine ready, but he can't finish the work until the last part of the federal loan comes through. Every day I wake up and turn on the TV and go, please let them be done. Please let it say, you know, oh, government's opening again. This is not, uh, this, this having a ripple effect. You're, we're, we are all the little pawns here. This is hurting us, not just some people from another country we're trying to prevent from coming here. It's hurting the ones that are here trying to do something. We reached out to the Small Business Administration about this issue. We were told they were closed because of the government shutdown. The shutdown is also prompting Columbia Sportswear CEO to send a message to President Trump and Congress. Tim Boyle put this statement on all of Columbia's social media pages. The message reads, make America parks open again. 
Boyle says he wants to see the parks open and clean again, and he wants his customers to have a place to use Columbia's products. Reaction to the message has been mixed. Comments on Columbia's Facebook posts show some agreeing with their message and others saying they're done buying Columbia products as a result. A heads up for cyclists and runners tonight. A popular path around the Willamette River will close for a while. We're talking about the East Bank Esplanade. February 1st, it'll close between the steel and the Hawthorne bridges for repair work. It's set to reopen on April 1st. Now, as part of this, the city's also bringing back Better NATO early to serve as a detour. One lane on NATO Parkway by the waterfront will be closed off for drivers and reserved for walkers and cyclists. That's the detour, and that begins January 28th. It typically only happens in the summer months, but happening early this year. Happening right now, it is chaos on a Seattle viaduct. Look at that. Crews have been trying to close the Alaskan Way viaduct, but there are so many people taking a last chance drive on it. It's still packed at this hour. Some are hanging out the window. You look there, they got the tops down, talking, getting out to walk around. Some even shooting fireworks. This is a major thoroughfare along the downtown waterfront in Seattle, but the tunnel needs upgrades that are just too costly. So it's closing for good and will be demolished. Listen to all the horns. A new tunnel to replace it won't open for about three more weeks. So officials are expecting gridlock in the city. So maybe put off your visit for the next few weeks. Tonight, a Wisconsin girl who disappeared three months ago, 13-year-old Jamie Kloss, is alive and safe, and even police are stunned. I mean, it was first unreal, and is it true? And then when we confirmed with Sheriff Dahlbeck's team that it's confirmed it was her, uh, you know, my legs started to shake, man. It was, it was awesome. It sure is. Jamie turned up 70 miles from the Wisconsin home where her parents were murdered. Police say the suspect, this man, 21 year old Jake Patterson, took Jamie against her will to a house in a remote rural area in Gordon, Wisconsin. They do not believe he had any prior contact with the Kloss family. Police say she escaped from Patterson while he was out. Kloss approached a woman on the road who was out walking her dog and asked for help. She immediately took Kloss to a neighbor's house and called 911. We knew it was Jamie immediately, and we thought 911's not going to believe us. Like I've told everybody, it's like I, I was seeing a ghost in person because I, I didn't think she was alive. Police say Patterson was out looking for Kloss when they found him. He is now under arrest for the murders of her parents and her kidnapping. Next, a local hero saw a neighbor in trouble and didn't hesitate to help. It happened so fast, and the flames were so big when I got here. They were already coming out of the window. How he rescued a woman in a wheelchair from her burning home. Plus, avalanches bury cars and send snow crashing into a hotel. And later, it's a KGW premiere edition of Friday Night Hoops, the best of high school basketball from around the area around the corner. And the ski conditions here are quite good. No avalanches and there's no new snow to report, but we've got 76 inches of Timberline, 64 of Meadows, Ski Bowl 34 inches, and Mount Bachelor has 61 inches. Going to be a great weekend for skiing.